Good morning, church. Today, I want to encourage you to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to read a few verses from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, where Paul makes some powerful claims about Jesus that you and I today, full of faith, we need to keep speaking this over our lives and know how powerful Jesus Christ, the risen King, is. Verse 18 He says, as surely as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy, and I preach to you as God's ultimate yes. And he always does what he says. Today, speak to your soul. Take several times today to read this portion to yourself. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 19. Speak over yourself. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one that we preach. He is God's ultimate yes. And he always does what he says. It doesn't matter how old the dream, how old the vision Write the vision down. Make it bold. Even though it's fulfillment tarries, it will be fulfilled. Like God told Prophet Habakkuk, he told him to write the vision down that even the runner may see it clearly. Let us make memorials. Let's write down the visions. Let's write down the scriptures that the Lord has engraved in our heart so we can see it, so we can feed our five senses with the truth of God's word. What you have seen as a vision, as a dream, write it down. Might have been a brief glimpse, but write it down. Make it clear. Feed your earthly senses, your vision, your hearing, your sight, um, everything. Feed the word of the Lord. Feast on the word of the Lord for all his promises as our yes and amen through Jesus Christ. Jesus never wavers between yes and no. He is God's ultimate yes. And he always does what he says. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. Every time you say amen to the plans of God over your life, every time there is a glimpse, a inkling of this is what the Lord wants to do for you. When you say amen, it ascends to God for his glory. When you say, yes, Lord, here I am, be it unto me according to your word, we are glorifying the Father. Remember when the Father wanted to create the universe in Genesis 1, right from the beginning of time, this written word is this union of the Father's desire, the Son's surrender, and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Genesis 1, when the Father said, let there be light, there was light. It was Jesus stepping up and saying, here I am, Lord. And he became the light. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, this world that was dark, formless and without form. And there was just chaos when the Holy Spirit hovered over the dark waters, when his power hovered over the dark chaos. And the father said, let there be light. His word was fulfilled in Christ. Christ is the light of the world. He is the word of God. And when the word became flesh, there was light. And this universe came into being. This universe was created out of nothingness. So today, when you look at the dark, chaos, hopeless situations, the hopelessness that seems to linger over the people you love, speak life, speak truth. Say, let there be light and there will be light in your loved one's life. Because what God did in Genesis 1, he is able to do in you by the power of Jesus Christ. Just yield to the Holy Spirit. Today, the word of the Lord to us is focus on Jesus Christ, who is the resounding yes of the Father God. He is God's ultimate yes. There are many dreams cut down. There are stumps in your life. When you look back at your life, the spirit of the Lord is saying there are stump like situations, things that the devil cut off because he did what he's supposed to do. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. He has cut down your dreams. And without the Holy Spirit, you will not have the power to believe that the new growth is possible. The Lord said in Job chapter 14 that at the scent of water, there will be growth. So today I pray that you will yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. He is able to cause sprouting and new life to grow. I'm reading from Job 14, verse 7. Even a tree has more hope 
if it is cut down it will sprout again and grow new branches in this season of spring as you are doing planting i know you have seen new growth your plants that you prune you see the green leaves coming out of old cut out, cut out pruned dead branches that same god is alive the growth that you see in the plants that you are pruning is able to prune uh, the stumps in your life that have been pruned that have been cut down by the enemy that has been pruned by the father there will be new growth verse 8 says though its roots have grown old in the earth and its stump decays you might be seeing decaying stumps in the natural but the answer lies in verse 9 at the scent of water it will bud and sprout again like a new seedling just the scent of water the aroma of christ is our confidence the aroma of christ the gospel has the power to restore to rebuild to rejuvenate and to just cause new growth i pray that you will see your dead dreams the things you have given up on bear life and come up in the power of the living god our god is able he is a resounding yes jesus christ is the resounding yes and i pray that the faith of jesus christ will be your confidence today the faith that has been tested in fire and has emerged as pure gold let it enter your hearts not just your faith in what god will do for you the faith of jesus christ while he lived on this earth there was a faith by which he spoke to the woman who was caught in the act of adultery who was brought to be punished jesus had a confidence with which he said he had a faith and he received this faith not easy he spent all night on the mount of olives praying after a full busy day of ministry of accusations from the pharisees when you read john 7 and 8 in succession you see that john 8 starts with he returned jesus returned to the mount of olives but early the next morning he went back again to the temple and a crowd gathered and that is when they brought this woman to test him many of us are in situations like this when we are ready to operate in faith people are actually setting uh, setting traps for us to trick us but what did jesus tell her in verse uh, 11 jesus told if there is anyone who has never sinned let him throw the first stone and he knew there is not one who has fulfill the law all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the lord jesus is the only one who had the authority to condemn her but did he no in verse 11 no lord she said when jesus asked where are your accusers didn't even one of them condemn you and she said no lord and what did jesus say neither do i go and sin no more there is an authority by which he told her go and sin no more and those words i believe encouraged her to live free of this a pattern of life a pattern of sin today i pray that every cyclical pattern of sin the claim of satan over your life will be broken satan may have had a pattern of cutting down your dreams and it may be flowing in your bloodline that at a certain age certain blessings are stolen from your family members but today i come against it in the name of jesus christ by the faith of jesus christ the same faith that told this woman go and sin no more may we walk in victory may we not live under the sin of this fear of falling fear of failing fear of not reaching my destiny may we know that the plans that he has for us will be fulfilled will prosper will prevail the gates of hell will not prevail if he has seen you to be a restorer to be a destiny helper may he use you may the right connections happen in your life that you will be a destiny helper that together like paul and silas and timothy together preach christ may your partnerships emerge today that together you will preach christ and many will be rescued from darkness that you will see christ being fulfilled in your life as the resounding yes of the father and i pray that you would have a grace to say amen for the power of your amen rises before god ascends to god as for his glory let the lord be glorified in your life let every doubt unbelief be consumed on the fire of god let there be new life let every stump bear growth let the root bear fruit at the scent of water may you walk in victory because know that jesus himself came out of the stump of jesse when you read isaiah 53 people didn't expect anything good to come out of nazareth he but he came out of the bloodline of david the root of jesse 
the throne of David remains today through Jesus and the finished work on the cross. I pray that the throne room experience would be yours today, that you will see yourself seated at the right hand of the Father as the every accessor, that you will receive every blessing that has been promised to Abraham, that the sure mercies of David will be your portion through Christ Jesus. Let the faith of Christ define you today, every moment of today, that you will know who you belong to. And because you belong to Jesus, the Lord will use you to turn the world upside down. Have a blessed day of walking in victory.